Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii. This is the Hawaii State of Clean Energy Show, and we have some whiz bang guests for you. You're all familiar with Hawaii Energy. Guess what? We have Brian K. Aloha, the current executive director of Hawaii Energy, and Ray Starling, the former executive director of Hawaii Energy. And we're going to talk efficiency so that it is imbued in your soul. I have, speaking of which, a couple of efficiency slides to start off with before we do the general conversation. This is a chart put out by Hawaiian Electric before Next Era became history, and it starts on the left with the current year and then ends with 2045 100% clean energy and note that the upper, oh, the blue is the natural gas that they were going to use with uh, Nexera. This is all totally changed, but I want to point out that the all over direction of energy consumption from left to right is up. What happened to efficiency? Well, the first slide would indicate that if the building energy efficiency, building code were past that that black line across would result in about that much savings but that's not all we go to the next slide because we're going to update these codes periodically by 2024 we're going to have that much savings and we go to the next slide there's more and by 2030 that much savings and finally by the year 2045 that much savings. That is a huge chunk just by energy efficiency. That is the power of energy efficiency. Did I pull these numbers out of the hat? Well, it's, I sort of did for those. But if we go to the final slide, this is from the Pacific Northwest Natural Labs. And the slide on the left shows the gains in efficiency towards their zero net energy, the green part is efficiency and then the same people did an analysis of what energy would cost Hawaii between now and 2045 and you see all those cents 10 cents 19 cents 20 cents on the far right that purple little bloop that is 2.2 cents per kilowatt hour for energy efficiency versus all those other costs so, Brian, is that, is that a good stage to set up a really exciting venue for the, making a case for energy efficiency? Absolutely. I, yeah. think you, I think you laid out just one of the things that we often hear is energy efficiency is the low-hanging fruit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. At 2.2 cents a kilowatt hour, how could you not be taking advantage mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. looking at um, that first? As we look at the 100% clean energy picture, we're going to need all the different components of this. Mm -hmm. And you pointed out on that slide just how much energy efficiency can bring down that overall need for generation, which mm -hmm. costs more than energy efficiency itself. Uh, you know, one of the things that I like to reference, and we had been talking about this mm -hmm. around the Hawaii, uh, the Clean Energy Day that uh, was at the, uh, last month, and we talked yeah. a lot about just the, the low-hanging fruit you know, Secretary Chu, former Energy Secretary Chu, said that's the fruit on the ground. I mean, it is just <laughs> lying there to be yeah, picked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think oftentimes people don't think of energy efficiency in the same boat as renewable mm -hmm. energy, but your chart really showed the need to combine the two to get to our 100% quicker and faster. Well, one problem is that it's not sexy. We've often tried to come up with a photo for energy efficiency, and we've got this guy up on a ladder changing a fluorescent light fixture. How exciting is that? Whereas you have your beautiful photovoltaics and, and so forth. Right, yeah. right. It's definitely, it's definitely an image. There's, there's something to having panels on your roof. Mm -hmm. There's something to be driving your electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. So it's raising energy efficiency to that same level yeah. in, in the conversation. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, so, somehow we've got to make it exciting. Yeah. So Ray, what uh, words of wisdom has you? You had years of experience. Well, I, I, I had the program for the first seven years, and mm -hmm. of course, 
the program uh, was, uh, was actually something that the legislature decided needed to be in the hands of a third party. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, back in 2007, I believe, they passed legislation that, uh, that told the utility that they were going to take some of the money from the ratepayers and put it into a fund, uh, the um, uh, Public Benefits Fund, and, uh, and actually have the Public Utilities Commission to uh, go out and, and submit or, or uh, make a request for bids uh, mm -hmm. so that independent third parties could come in and bid to take over the program. And that's, that's how we got it. Uh, and we were the first, uh, it was a, the company was called SEIC at the time. It, mm -hmm. it later changed its name and made some adjustments and it's now Lidos. That's mm -hmm. uh, what Brian is, uh, that's who Brian works for and that's who I did work for before uh, we came to the end of the seven-year contract, and mm -hmm. we actually uh, went out and, and bid and got the new contract, which is possibly about nine years. This one mm -hmm. uh, is even longer. So uh, that, that process sort of gave us uh, a, a start in movement mm -hmm. uh, uh, of the energy efficiency sexiness that we needed mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. get in everybody's head yeah. that this is really important. And, uh, and so we... We got it through the first seven years, and I think we made some good progress, but uh, Brian has come on board, and he mm -hmm. comes from a little bit different uh, point of view in terms of uh, what he brings to the table. He's, uh, he's been a contractor out there doing this kind of stuff, and so mm -hmm. he's come on board, and I'll let him talk a little bit more about it, but he's, uh, he's really driving this thing. He's kind of put it in second or third gear and we're going for you know mm -hmm. fifth gear overdrive uh, mm -hmm. at some point and uh, and it's it's been a it's been a good uh, movement forward but as you showed on your chart we've got a long way to go mm -hmm. we've got to get those lines going down not up mm -hmm. and uh, that's gonna that's gonna take some work on Brian's part I'll be I'll be watching. <laughs> <laughs> but especially since, as I understand it, your current budget per year is a bit lower than the previous budgets, but your targets are a bit higher. So you're going to be doing even more with less, which is hard for me to imagine because I work closely with Hawaii Energy. And as far as I was concerned, they were just maximizing the effect of every dollar to squeeze every bit of efficiency they could out of that. Right, right. Yeah. It is. It is going to be a challenge. There's, mm -hmm. there's no doubt. But you know, the opportunity to come on the show today and just get the awareness out, I think, mm -hmm. is a big part of how we're going to have to do more with less. Is mm -hmm. educating, doing more to help consumers, businesses, and families make smart energy choices. And and a lot of times, I think people want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. They just need to better understand what they can do as part of their daily lives or within the work that they mm -hmm. that they're in and. You know, coming up next month, August, since we're almost at the beginning of October, yep. it's Energy Awareness Month, and mm -hmm. you know, we're really mm -hmm. excited about that as we, again, bring energy efficiency into the conversation of 100% clean energy. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of things to help raise the awareness of efficiency, help educate mm -hmm. the families mm -hmm. and businesses of Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. When I, I associate a lot with these people in the Northwest, I, I showed those slides. Mm -hmm and they talk about culture. And mm -hmm. I've had one scholar say, culture isn't just important, culture is everything. And I think what you're attempting to do is get a culture of super energy awareness among the general uh, populace. Because we three, we eat, live, and sleep this <laughs> stuff. We go to cocktail parties and that's all we can talk about. But normal people, oh, really, that saves, oh, those, blue lights are just so icky Ugh. right yeah, and they, they have negative connotations or, or no connotations whatsoever so right. it, raising the awareness is really really important yeah absolutely yeah. and I think that's where I think one of the shifts that we're trying to make and, and really help people understand how it makes a difference to them personally mm -hmm. um, both on their energy bill but also in the bigger picture you talked about culture I mean living here in Hawaii we have such a beautiful environment and mm -hmm. for us to be able to protect it when we look at the effects of climate change across the world and particularly with islands mm -hmm. and our economy mm -hmm. being so dependent on tourism it's important that we protect the environment we protect what we have here and so raising the awareness of what's at stake beyond just 100 percent clean energy but 
getting back to our ancestors and what the Native Hawaiians and the Ahupua system of really living sustainably and, and not wasting. It's in our DNA, it's in our core, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. again, making that connection so that people really understand the bigger picture to things will hopefully help bring some of the sexiness back to mm -hmm. efficiency. Well, one, one part of that is interior air quality or health, mm -hmm. where I hope we in Hawaii don't do this, but the average mainland person now spends 90% of his time indoors. Mm -hmm. And study after study shows that indoor air quality is not nearly as good as outdoor air quality. So just for instance, I'm the energy codes guy. One thing I built into the tropical climate zone is allowing for jealousy windows, which would not be allowed under the mainland code. They do have a little bit of air leakage, but even in centrally air conditioned homes, you get a nice cool evening, especially during the winter months, shut off that AC, open up those jealousies and be healthier and save a lot of money in the process. Right, right. Yeah. And again, it, I think a lot of that is getting back to how the architecture of a lot of our buildings were mm -hmm. 50, 60 years ago mm -hmm. and the plantation style homes and how we optimized uh, you know, for the trade wind flow mm -hmm. and in utilizing what we have here. It's, it's kind of getting back to our roots instead of Very necessarily so adding yeah. more and more load mm -hmm. and air conditioning. Yeah. yeah, another aspect of the tropical code which we devised was encouraging long overhangs mm -hmm. over the walls because I personally measured on a bright sunny day a wall that was shaded and it came in at maybe 95 degrees and then I go to a portion of the wall that's unshaded and getting the direct solar gain we're talking 135 degrees so just by shading you're dropping your temperature by 40 degrees there Absolutely. And so there's that much less temperature to penetrate from the outside in, into the inside. Right, right. Yeah. And you think about even a lot of our old neighborhoods where mm -hmm. we had tons of mango trees in the backyard mm -hmm. and some of the shading, mm -hmm. too, that that provided yeah. for the homes. That was natural shading beyond um, our architecture. And those are, again, some of the things when we look at technologies today, like um, solar attic fans and other mm -hmm. ways to get, mm -hmm. now that the heat's in the house, how do we yeah. get it out? And instead of conditioning the space, it's, it's ventilation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, again, I've talked to contractors who have gone into hot attics, and one contractor quoted me as 160 degrees. Mm -hmm. I guess the attic was totally enclosed. Right. Put in solar attic fans, boom, that temperature drops to about 105 degrees. Right. But on that cheery note, we need to take a very brief break with Brian K. Aloha and Ray Starling, Think Tech Hawaii, back in a minute. Aloha, I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. I also have a blog of the same name at kauilucas.com where you can see all of my past shows. Join me this Friday and every Friday at 3 p.m. Aloha. Hey everybody, my name is David Chang and I'm the new host of a new show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you secrets on giving yourself the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests and great mentors of mine from the political, military, business, nonprofit, you name it. So it's something for everybody. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code, not Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. <laughs> My beautiful guest, so, so, so aware with this poignant questions, Brian K. Aloha and Ray Starling. Ray, I understand that you have a question with deep wisdom attached? Well, yes. I, I wanted to tap into uh, the wisdom we have at your end of the table because uh, you are the codes guy here, and I think a lot of people don't really understand the energy codes that you are uh, dealing with and how that will be, be a major player going forward in reaching our goals out there uh, in the decades to come. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us a little bit about where we're at 
where the obstacles are and what, what you see going forward in mm -hmm. terms of the codes? What, what are they going to affect? Okay, well first, where we are at, except for the island of Kauai, we are still at the 2006 energy code. Technology is taking off like a rocket. Government is proceeding at the pace of a Galapagos tortoise. <laughs> we are way, way behind the times. But your staff has done surveys of, of homes, the new homes, and they are incorporating a lot of the new energy code provisions anyway. So what are, just to be simple, to stick to single family residences, first and foremost, the code does what it can to prevent that sun's heat from coming through the roof. And what we did first at the Hawaii level is encourage reflective roofs. The more you can reflect the sun's heat back out, the less heat is going to penetrate. We led the way, and I participate in national codes, now for climate zones one, two, three, plus Hawaii, those are the southern climate zones, reflective roofs are mandatory. They are such a cost-effective way of keeping the heat out. So, so does that mean, if, I know if you're putting in a new roof mm -hmm. uh, on a brand new building, then the, the code would apply, but does it apply if my roof is 40 years old and I need to replace it? Yep, excellent question. The new code, which hopefully will be adopted in the next few months, uh, requires that when you strip the roofing material off, and you expose the sheathing, the, the plywood, mm. and that is not insulated. You need to insulate it. Oh, really? Or we put in a Hawaii amendment, you can make it reflective or you can exhaust it. Wow. We, we changed the mainland code in, in that way. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. I, did, I didn't know that. Because th this is the, the, the roof is the first line of defense for keeping our homes naturally cool or reducing our, our air conditioning yeah. load. And then we have windows, uh, the windows that we grew up with. I won't speak for young people, but we grew up with single pane windows that emitted about 87% of the sun's heat that was striking it. Yeah. So it went right in the house and stayed there. Now the code requires what are called high performance windows, where through the magic of nanotechnology, almost, oh, well, 70% no, a new code, 75% of the sun's heat is reflected, but we don't know it from looking at the window. We're still looking through a nice, clear window. That's required by code. And then keeping the, the walls from ha having heat penetration also is another aspect. Right. Yeah, right. for residential, that, that's the nitty gritty of it. Well, um are, is there is there some education that's that's you know, you're looking at for uh, for people who who might not understand the codes? Are there mm -hmm. things that they can w go uh, places where they can go to find out sort of what what the code requirements are? Uh, yeah, we I we have that on our Hawaii State Energy Office website. We have all the new code outlined, and then when the time comes we do training for the frontline people architects engineers and contractors those are the people who really need to know this stuff so that they can uh, follow it so we do extensive uh, training but brian i'm interested in what new and different revolutionary ideas you have for sure well yeah, before yeah, we leave the codes yeah. piece i would say that mm -hmm. and the role that Hawaii energy would play mm -hmm. um is when you know when we move the codes forward and we adopt some of these higher level of codes is that that this isn't necessarily the highest bar of what we can mm -hmm. achieve in terms mm -hmm. of efficiency. And so the Hawaii Energy programs will incentivize additional efficiencies beyond Please, the code yeah, yeah. Um, so that we can reach that, that much higher level of efficiency. And your, your staff is very aware of it. They bird dog me. They follow <laughs> me around like, like a puppy dog, getting every little nuance to it and saying, well, We've got to adjust it like this. We've got to adjust it like this when when the code comes in. Right, you know? right, and yeah. just I think optimizing it so it, it's mm -hmm. it's user friendly for the people who are mm -hmm. designing buildings, but also applicable so people are incentivized to yeah. to want to yeah. um, uh, you know take advantage of the code. And, and we always, in looking at these changes, we always uh, consider cost effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Because we want your incentive, of course, but if it's cost-effective in the first place, and then you sweeten it with your incentive, people just 
cannot help but go out and take advantage of it. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And it goes back to the chart that you showed earlier, just the cost effectiveness of, of doing these projects from mm -hmm. an energy efficiency mm -hmm. standpoint. When people really understand the economics behind it and how much savings it'll bring to them, both immediately on their bill and long term on what they're going to be able to do mm -hmm. um, from how they can spend that money in better ways yeah. and driving it yeah. back yeah. into yeah. our yeah. local economy. Mm -hmm. It's that, that multiplier that really has such a great effect. Mm -hmm. And we didn't mention the fact that we in Hawaii spend a huge portion of our gross state product on imported oil. Right. The more efficient we become, the less oil we import, the more dollars stay here at home. Mm -hmm. Right. The more that yeah. stays here at home, it, there's mm -hmm. a multiplier effect as you invest in these energy efficiency technologies and contractors mm -hmm. are, are benefiting from the installation of these and that goes into their families and that gets spent yep. again in the yep. local economy. It's, it's such a multiplier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As far as kind of some of the things that are coming up in the future, probably one of the most exciting things on the, on the horizon is that October 5th is actually Energy Efficiency Day. It's an inaugural mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. national event um, here in the state. It will be also Energy Efficiency Day in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're really excited again to just start to get the awareness out because there's a lot of things people can do without any investment, yeah. right? It's simple things such as washing your, your clothes with a full load and washing mm -hmm. your dishes with a full load to reducing usage um, by using a clothesline instead of a, a dryer. Again, some of the things that we always used to do, but uh, you know, also along those lines, it's, it's just an awareness. I think none of us would walk out of a room and leave the faucet on mm -hmm. in, in the sink, right? But we'll walk out of a room and leave the light on. Mm -hmm. And uh, just being able to change some of those behaviors, they're real simple, they don't cost anything, it can mm -hmm. drive real savings. So that's, that's coming up later this month. Good, and I, I would say that the, as far as I'm concerned, the incandescent light bulb is a total, total dinosaur. I've measured it at 100, no, 460 degrees, a 100 watt mm -hmm. incandescent right. lamp. Right. Last thing we need in our homes is more heat. Exactly. Shift over to LEDs, you're reducing your wattage by a factor of five, saying going down from 100 watts to 20 watts, and those LEDs produce virtually zero heat. So you're naturally keeping your home cooler. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, you were one of those that uh, was really on the <laughs> forefront of your sock experiment. Mm -hmm. I always remember those, yeah. those days of the burning sock. <laughs> but uh, you're right. I mean, the incandescent bulb was a heater that emitted mm -hmm. light, Yeah. right? And yeah. now we're using technologies that are really geared toward providing light. Mm -hmm. And LEDs don't have to be those awful blue, glary things that I always hear about. You can dial up. LEDs to any color temperature you want, including exactly the color temperature that the old uh, incandescents gave off. Exactly. It's really yeah. fascinating. And in, uh, in some countries in Europe, the tunability of LEDs, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. even within a setting, you can set it to different settings depending on the mood or the activity level or the mm -hmm. alertness that you want. Um, there's been some of that done in, in classrooms just to mm -hmm. see what the effect is on uh, children yeah. and calming them versus exciting and different times of the day. So the technology is going beyond energy, mm -hmm. energy savings, but also how do you improve the environment? And when you talk about schools, how do you improve the learning environment? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So any other exciting initiatives coming down the pike? We're getting low on time and we're barely getting warmed up here. <laughs> right. Well, we do, we do have a lot. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll have enough time to get into all of it, but I'll, one place you can always check out is uh, our website at hawaiienergy.com. Um, this, we're, as Ray mentioned, we're at the start of a, a new program year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a three-year program cycle, so we have a number of new programs both for businesses and for residents along with some of the programs that we've always offered. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of them that's gonna, that we're enhancing this year is really around a lot of the retro commissioning of buildings and mm -hmm. spending more time and effort of, these buildings are in existence, they have a lot of times the control mechanisms to, to really manage the usage, mm -hmm. but over time either the, those settings have moved or the building operators aren't as aware of how to use it. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be spending a lot of effort there because that's again a very low cost behavioral type recommissioning effort that can bring yeah. a lot of savings. Re retro commissioning referring to the fact that you would, you'd have experts, engineers enter an existing building and with the building manager's permission, go through and examine, especially the uh, air conditioning system that right. can get way out of tune. I, I liken it to getting your car tuned up periodically. We would never dream of just driving our car for year after year, but that's what happens in some buildings. 
with bad energy effects and uh, sometimes bad health effects also. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. Uh, we have an energy efficiency auction that will be uh, rolling out mm. in this three-year program cycle. We, we did that um, initially a few years ago, and now that uh, we have this three-year program horizon, it's a lot easier to get the right uh, information out to people that can come mm -hmm. in and bid and bring the cost of these savings down mm. and really allow for innovation in the marketplace to come in so that we're not always having to create or come up with the solutions mm. and let the marketplace that's very innovative come and bring mm -hmm. solutions mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. us as well. Sounds good. What, can you give an example of what the auction will look like? Or? Sure. So uh, essentially what we would be putting out there is for either businesses or um, contractors that have opportunities that they see they can bring in a lot of energy savings through mm -hmm. a particular device or by aggregating perhaps through a demand response portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, just a number of different ways to allow either technologies that we currently aren't rebating or haven't been proven to things of how do we just aggregate and, and build scale to it mm -hmm. um, in a way that maybe the Hawaii energy programs can't do on their own. Those are the types of things that the, the auction will allow. Mm -hmm. Uh, you mentioned demand response. That's where the utility can interact with, say, a large uh, air conditioning system or lighting system and say, hey, we, we're getting near to overload. Can we take a little bit of your load out? Right. And they, generally they can, and the inhabitants don't notice a difference. Mm -hmm. But that prevents the utility from having to fire up a new generator. Mm -hmm. Saves all kinds of energy there. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. so that's, uh, I, I know that demand response works very, very well in some mainland utilities. I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're going to be initiating that. Right, and yeah. it's becoming even more necessary given mm -hmm. uh, the amount of solar energy that's mm -hmm. on the grid mm -hmm. during the day, um, yet a lot of the usage is driven at five to nine at night, and we mm -hmm. need to find ways to, to shift that load yeah. to balance it and Efficiency, demand response are all big components mm -hmm. of that. And we're just about to wrap up, but you brought in a whole new subject, batteries. <laughs> what about, and very briefly, you're going to be dealing with storage batteries? Sure, I, I think it's something we're, we're definitely looking at how does that integrate in mm -hmm. um, to the picture of the value of energy efficiency at different times of day. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, batteries themselves are not energy efficient upgrades. Yeah, yeah. So it's just pairing uh, storage with renewables and energy efficiency and seeing if there are some things that make sense to combine this all more holistically for customers and for the grid. Definitely. And on that cheery note, we have to bid aloha oi. This is Howard Wig, Code Green, Brian K. Aloha, and Ray Starling of, or an ex of Hawaii Energy. Thank you very much.